So that's a general introduction for the today's share. And let's move on. So the outline of the talk today uh, includes several parts. So first of all, I will give a very, very short uh, description for what Coop Villa is. And then I will go into uh, some details about how Coop Villa works and especially for how we design and uh, the, the general principles for designing Coop Villa and uh, implementing it. And this part will contain a lot of uh, detailed techniques. And uh, after that, I will uh, actually, Fog will give us a demo presentation for, uh, for playing with Kuvela. Actually, uh, it's, it's just a simple practice for using Kuvela to do the application delivery and management. So let's go to the first part. Uh, the first part, so uh, I'm, I, I'm not, uh, I, I do not know uh, if you guys have been looking into Kuvela for, for, from which time, but Kuv since Kuvela is developing very fast, and so even like half years ago, Kuvela uh, has a lot of functions that uh, today we have lots of functions that one year ago, we do not have it completely. So, uh, so generally Kuvela is a modern software platform focusing on application delivery. And recently uh, we are also adding operating capabilities for application. So generally we are, uh, we are working around the application itself uh, about how to define applications and how to uh, organize the applications and deliver, uh, deliver them to, uh, to multi-cloud environments. And also we focus on the day two operating part, which means that the op uh, how the application runs and if there are any exceptions for the applications. So that's what Kuvela cares about. And uh, besides, one of the most important thing in Kubella is that it's uh, uh, it's a program. Uh, it's organized the resources that it want to manage in a highly programmable way, which makes it very uh, extensible and use uh, uh, and very friendly for community developers to make contributions. For example, we can make arbitrary extensions and integrations to uh, third-party uh, systems as we listed here, such as the Prometheus and uh, Terraform and other, other lots of open source pro uh, projects. And also we are uh, focusing on the continuous delivery part. And we have made some practices for integrating with the CI pipelines, such as Jenkins, and also the GitLab uh, or GitHub at uh, GitHub Actions. So this is a very brief overview of what Kubella is. And then I will go on with some technical details and designs and principles for the Kubella. Okay, so the first part of the designs is about the application delivery, which is actually what Kubella uh, is uh, rooted from. So at first, the Kuvela is uh, more of focusing on delivering application. And one of the most exciting things uh, in Kuvela to deliver, uh, to deliver application is that we use uh, high level abstractions to model the application. Uh, so as you can see that in Kuvela, we have a very uh, uh, core unit called the application. It is designed to model a fully functional microservice unit. For example, uh, if you want to have your own website, so the, the website itself is can be seen as an application. But to make that website works, uh, you might need some different components like you, you, might need, uh, you might need to have some front-end service, the back-end service, and also the, uh, the database to serve the data. So uh, to, at, at this point, you can organize your application with different components. And each component will contain a running workload that provides specific functions, like the front-end service or the database. And these components are 
uh, relevant with each other, and they might need to call each other to provide a fully uh, ser uh, full services to the customers or users. And beyond the component itself, uh, to make those components work, uh, usually we do not only have those running uh, containers or pods on Kubernetes. We also have some auxiliary uh, resources. We call it trait. The operational auxiliaries uh, includes uh, like storage or gateway that can provide some, uh, some basic uh, infrastructure capability that helps the running workload to provide the services. So that's how we define the basic application. So all, all the resources and uh, are organized into the uh, components and those, uh, those re relevant components compose the application itself. So, so the application is what Kuvela cares about and the following uh, capabilities are all working for that application. And as for the uh, as for the abstraction layer, we use the Qlang programming language to make abstractions. So actually, in Kubella, there is a lot of uh, resource templates which we call X definitions. For example, uh, as for the uh, as for the web service, uh, you might need to run some pods or containers in Kubernetes, and we usually use a deployment Kubernetes deployment. To, to deploy your image. And to model that uh, running workload, we can create a component definition called web service. So the web service component definition is, uh, is a queue template which accepts parameters from the application and then render it into the detailed deployment under, uh, under the uh, application. So uh, in addition to the web service itself, we might need to add some uh, traits to it to help it to work. Like we might need some high available services. So we may need that, uh, that deployment to have multiple replicas. That, that's how we use the scalar trait. The scalar, scalar trait will define the template of modifying the original workload. And also, uh, uh, if you want to expose your service to outside, you might need some gateway auxiliaries, such as the service object and the ingress object. They can use to come, uh, together with each other, and these can be bundled into another trait definition, or we call some resource, te uh, resource template. And the gateway trait definition accepts some parameters, like uh, the, the path and the port you would like to use, and also the underlying uh, ingress class and also the domain you want to connect with. So these parameters are exposed to upper layer application users. So the application layer, uh, the application user only need to fill those uh, exposed parameters to use the underlying gateway. They do not need to care about what the underlying uh, resources really are. So these are uh, managed by the Q render engine and the template. So to this point, the application user are usually application developers. They focus on the function of the application, but the definition part is more of uh, system operators. Uh, uh, those guys are more, fo uh, more of focusing on how to expose underlying uh, infrastructure to their upper, uh, upper users. So, so by using this, uh, this abstraction layer, we can make the uh, large uh, development team can cooperate better with the underlying operating team. Uh, besides the, the template itself is highly extensible. You can write like arbitrary rendering logic in Q language, and then you can just put it in your Kuvela system, and then the Kuvela system will be extended. Uh, so that you can, the application user will be able to connect to more infrastructure capabilities. So that's how the basic extensibility came from. Okay, so after we have done the rendering part, that is, we render the, those uh, parameters into the real running resource. The next part is that we need to orchestrate those resources. 
because as I mentioned above, those components in application are not irrelevant. They are re related to each other. For example, your WordPress uh, application, uh, your WordPress deployment might need to be run after the database is ready. So the database component should be uh, set up before your WordPress is delivered. So, so that's how we orchestrate the application. We specify the dependencies between different components, and that will tell the application how those components should be orchestrated and delivered. And this is one way we can organize those uh, components in one application. Except for the dependencies, we also have a very fine-grained control capability for the application delivery process, that is the workflow part. So in workflow, you can actually manually specify which step you want to use and how the, those steps are organized together. For example, you can firstly uh, uh, apply your databases until it is ready, and then you will apply the WordPress. So finally, you may want to also add some Slack message to tell you that the delivery process has finished. So that's how you organize the workflow to make your application delivery process more controllable and more functional. Uh, besides the workflow part, we uh, very similar to other uh, uh, as uh, known uh, tools like Tekton or Argo CD, and we have uh, very advanced uh, capabilities for control the workflow part. For example, we can have some conditional execution, and also we can have some data uh, data uh, passing between different steps. And also the workflow part supports par uh, parallel execu uh, execution so that when you have lots of components inside one application, it can be de uh, delivered with high performance. Uh, besides, the workflow part is also highly extensible, uh, extensible uh, through the queue rendering templates. Instead of rendering those, uh, those templates into resources, the, uh, in the workflow part, we render those templates into actions or uh, commands that will be executed by the underlying Kubella controller. And the Kubella controller itself uh, provides lots of uh, lots of uh, underlying uh, functions, for example, apply one component or read some resources from the Kubernetes cluster or send messages through Slack. And the upper layer workflow step will be able to uh, leverage the underlying functions and organize them and, uh, and uh, make them work together to produce higher level uh, step uh, workflow steps for the application user. So the application user will be freed from carrying uh, the underlying implementations, but more focused on we, uh, what, fun, uh, what process they will, uh, would like to execute. So, uh, so depending on the scenario of application user want to use, there are uh, different level of abstractions and uh, they can they can use any way to organize them. And finally, we also support the multi-cluster deployment. For example, uh, if you want to deploy your engines into multiple Kubernetes clusters, the legacy way to do it is to like to copy the application, uh, copy the engines configuration and apply them into different Kubernetes clusters one by one. But with the Kubella application itself, you can specify the uh, multi-cluster deploy strategies. For example, you can specify the topology uh, to, 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 to uh, specify which clusters you want to deploy to. And the application will, uh, will be able to uh, uh, deploy those resources into different clusters at the same time or in order. Uh, and this will help the users to keep those uh, common configurations into one single file so that the management of those configurations will be much easier and uh, manageable. 
So if you want to uh, make some updates, you do not need to go one by one. You just add it one application and it will take effect in all clusters. So that's how we do multi-cluster deploy with the application. And in addition to that, we also have some authentication for the deploy process. That means we, uh, we reuse the authentication mechanism of Kubernetes and that will let the user of application only able to deploy resources under its privileges. So if someone wants to create an application and deploy resources that's beyond its privileges, it will be forbidden by the Kubernetes API server. So the, uh, the delivery process is authenticated and secured. And also the multi-cluster deploy supports all kinds of cloud providers. And also we even support uh, edge Kubernetes, which might have some issues with the network connection uh, uh, in which place we incorporate the open cluster management to support uh, two different ways for the uh, cross cluster connection, including the pull mode and the push mode. And okay, so that's all for the application delivery part. Uh, so by far, we have been uh, discussing about how Kubella define application, organize resources, and dispatching them into various uh, destinations. And also, uh, after we, we have delivered those applications, we will be focusing on how those applications run and how to, uh, how to manage them as and operating them. Okay, so the first uh, first important things for one application is that how it manage different resources. Uh, like uh, one of the fundamental rule for the Kubella application is that it is generally uh, final state oriented. So uh, when the delivery process has helped Kubella application to reach the the desired state, the desired state will be kept and will be watched as well. Uh, once someone added the resources and let it to uh, be different from the desired state, Kubella application will be able to find that and bring it back later. So, so this is one of the uh, fundamental rule for Kubella application. But also uh, there are scenarios that users do not need this feature and this feature can be uh, switched off as well. Uh, besides, the Kubella application also re is also responsible for recycling all the resources it's dispatched. So, so once the application is deleted or upgraded, the outdated resources will be deleted as well. Uh, there are some cases the applications could share, uh, multiple applications could share the same resource and they will share the control of the resource and uh, manage them in uh, manageable ways, yeah. Okay, and also Kubella application has version control. So if you have delivered your application and updated it and uh, uh, many times, you can actually roll back to previous versions. Once you find that the latest delivery uh, is, uh, is uh, has failed. So you can actually view those history versions and find out which one is successful and go to the latest successful one. So that is uh, a rollback uh, action for the application. And also sometimes you might need to, uh, you might want to manually uh, publish your application instead of let the application pub uh, publish itself once it's changed. So uh, with the manual publish uh, capability, you can edit your application first and commit those changes later. And for example, uh, when the changes are not committed, you can actually uh, use some uh, like CLI commands or the UI to see the difference of the current version and the, uh, the current uh, spec of the application. And after that, you, you can uh, make manual publish by specifying which version you would like to go. Uh, besides, we also have observability for the application itself. Uh, this is uh, achieved by integrating uh, various community, uh, various community uh, projects 
like the famous uh, Prometheus uh, and Grafna. And it is also reached by creating new uh, component definition and trait definition itself. And also uh, the backgrounds, uh, the, uh, those Grafna and Prometheus can be integrated from uh, Kuvela add-ons. And, oh, uh, and you can build them on premise. And also you can uh, reuse your uh, cloud services from cloud providers like Azure or uh, Amazon. Yeah. And also after you have set up your infrastructure for observability, Kuvela application is able to use those traits and components to declare which, uh, which way you want to use to monitor your application. So besides, we uh, we also have some basic observ uh, observability uh, capabilities from the CLI and the UI as well. Okay, as we uh, as I just mentioned that you can create the Prometheus and the Grafana from Kuvela applications, and that's the Kuvela's ecosystem, and that's how Kuvela itself integrates with the third party open source projects. So uh, as the official repository, uh, we have a, we have a, a repo on GitHub called Catalog, which holds lots of existing add-ons. And those add-ons are application templates, which is backed by Q as well. You can render those uh, application templates into application and deploy those applications in the Kubernetes cluster so that you can integrate other open source projects like DEX or Flux CD as well. So these add-ons are actually organized by uh, Q templates as well. And uh, these definitions will help the existing application in the Kubernetes cluster to use the capabilities provided by that add-on. Okay, uh, besides, uh, we also have a lot of tools in Kuvela uh, to help you to uh, deliver your application under various circumstances, like using the Terraform controller to manage your cloud resource, and also use the cluster gateway to manage multi-cluster resources as well. Okay, uh, after that, I would like to share a simple demo for Kuvela application that's uh, that will show how we play uh, the application and how we use it to handle uh, handle some real scenarios. And it is a video recorded by uh, recorded by Fog previously, and I will play it now. Hi everyone, my name is Fog. I'm glad that I can give you a quick demo today about how Kuvela can work uh, for your application. Linda, I, we can't see no. the video. We just see your PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, let me see. I, I need to share my screen. Yeah, can you see the video now? Yes. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Fog. I'm glad that I can give you a quick demo today about how Kuvena can work for your application from deploy, manage to observe. Let's get started. So let's start with a simple case. I have two clusters called local and product. I have already managed them with Vela command so I can use Vela class list to show two clusters. And I want to deploy an NGX to both of the clusters. So here's my application YAML. The application is also very simple. There's, there's only one component in the application. It's called NGX and its type is web service. I also changed its expose type to node port so that I can access the NGX more directly. And I have this policy here called topology. In this policy, I specify that I will apply the component NGX to two clusters, local and product. 
and in workflow, I define how I can control the deploy process. So first, I'm going to deploy the NGX component to two clusters. And after that, I will send a Slack notification to prove that my deploy is successful. Let's apply this application to the clusters. We can use van app command to apply the application. All right, the application is successfully applied. Let's use Vela status to check the status of the application. Okay, we can see that all the steps in the application is, is successful. Now we can also use uh, Vela status slash slash tree and the detail to show the resource detail of the application. This command shows all the resources behind the application. So the first line here is cluster, and after that is namespace. We can see that all the resources in the application from different cluster and namespace. In this application, we have this NGX deployment in two clusters here. And also we can use this Vela status slash endpoint to show the service to show the service address of the application. We can see that uh, there are two services in different clusters. And NGX is up. And in our application, we also send a Slack notification. So in my Slack, the bot also sent a successful message to the Slack channel. In Cluvela, we also have a very important part called add-on. The add-on system is one of the important parts of our ecosystem. We already have many powerful and useful built-in add-ons like Vela UX, the value X is a dashboard for Cluvera. And I have already enabled this add-on, so I can use Vela status slash dashboard to check its service address. We can see this demo NGX app here, and it's and this is the app that I just applied. So in ValueX, we can see more details of the application. For example, we can see the resource graph of the application. We can see that this NGX application will deploy to two clusters here. And in each cluster, there will be two resources. One is deployment, and the other is servers. We can also check the logs of the pod. In fact, we have some default resource graph rules for the normal application. For example, we will define that uh, after deployment, we will have replica set, and after that, we'll have pod. But if you want to create your own resource graph rule, that's totally fine with our queue interface. You just need to define your resource rules in the add-on, and when the add-on is enabled, all the resource graph rules will be applied. So that's more of deploy and manage part of Cluvela. We all know that after we have deployed the application, we still need to, we still need to observe it. So in our add-on systems, we have this built-in observability add-ons for our users to use. I have already enabled them, so let's check it. This is the uh, this is the Grafana add-on application. 
and we can use its service endpoint to visit. And here's the graph non dashboard. We can see that in the browser, we have this built in Kuvana applications dashboard. Okay, we can check out the default namespace and our demo and Jax app. So in the dashboard, we can see that the age of the application and some other resources here. If you want to check the deployment uh, dashboard, we can, we can click the link. And that's the deployment dashboard. We can see the memory and CPU or network here. But maybe that's not still enough. I want to know more about our NGX app. For example, the QBS of it, we can now change our application. We can add these trees here. So basically, this tree will collect logs from the STD out and use this info to create another graph node dashboard so that we can see the QBS of the NGX. We can now update this application. And let's refresh the graph now. After refresh the dashboard, we can see that there are new kind resource in the manager resource called graph now dashboard. This is create, this is created by the trade that we just applied. We can check out the details. Now that we can see the QBS in the NGX. All right, so that's all of my demo today. Thanks for listening. Okay, that's a brief introduction and the demo for the Kuvela. And uh, actually we have more information for the Kuvela, for example, uh, we, we have done some load testing and have shown that Kuvela's controller is, uh, is uh, possible to handle thousands of applications. Uh, under limited resources, and you can actually make some customized tuning to let your Kuvela controller to handle more applications under uh, certain circumstances. And also here is a brief uh, overview for the milestones of Kuvela. And you can see that uh, since the March in last year, we have just released the version 1.0, at which time we only have the application. But after one year and a half, and we have de develop, uh, developed a lot of new features like the workflow, uh, the value UX, and also the observability. And we are, uh, we are recently, recently working on uh, some new features for the workflow part and the ob observability. And we are making new uh, minor releases every three to four months, I think. Yeah, also, and there are lots of uh, uh, users that are using Kuvela. And as far as we know, that there are uh, some areas la, uh, that uses Kuvela. Uh, there are multiple uh, companies using Kuvela in those areas, like the bank, uh, banking area and also the car manufacturers. And also the, some cloud providers uses Kuvela to build their PaaS platform. And also there are some game companies. Uh, so as far as we see that uh, some high-tech industries uh, uh, likes Kuvela a lot. And also here is a chart for how Kuvela community are evolving. And uh, so the Kuvela, uh, there is a lot of uh, attractions to Kuvela recent days. And also we are responding to all kinds of issues and pull requests as fast as possible. And we have over uh, hundreds of contributors from various countries. And uh, for those thousands of issues have been created, we have solved most of them. And besides, we also have the bi-weekly community meeting. Uh, uh, which is uh, on Tuesday. And also uh, we have recorded each community meeting and posted it on YouTube. So actually there are also like 30 times recordings uh, on the network. 
and which uh, which introduced the progress of Kuvela uh, bi-weekly. Yeah, so that's all for today's sharing.